I'm not sure I accept the reasoning behind the idea that the existent have an obligation towards the non-existent. In other words, uh, do the living, those of us who are alive, have the obligation to respect the rights of the non-existent um, by uh, respecting their right to non-existence? Um, okay, I. <laughs> it, it seems a bit peculiar to talk about something that you know doesn't exist as something that does exist, but for the purposes of this discussion, I'm willing to examine that proposition. Let's say that I have the obligation to respect the right of those of us who are those, whatever, non-existent or potential human beings to stay potential and non-existent. I have a sense of obligation towards the potential, um, if nothing else, to respect their rights um, not to be born. So, presumably, I have an obligation to these entities, whatever they are. Okay. Now, on the other hand, what obligation do I have to the more tangible people around here? Their right to exist. Okay. Um, what tangible obligations do I have to them? In the Western world, many countries are um, having are experiencing a phenomenon known as negative population growth. Now, that's not really a big problem, unless, of course, um, uh, one is worried about national uh, existence. Um, say you're a Hungarian patriot and you believe that uh, we need more little Hungarians running around or else the foreigners will take over and it won't be Hungary anymore. I don't mean that. I mean, um, do I have any obligation to the comfort of other people, regardless of race, uh, language, creed, color, whatever? Do I have any obligation to them? To, to protect them from suffering. Because I have an obligation, presumably, again for the sake of this discussion, towards potential people to guard them against suffering. Do I have any obligation towards real people to guard them against suffering? Uh, we have zero population growth, as I've said. Let's say that we, we arrange things in such a way as that we actually have negative population growth. Well, pretty soon, there's not going to be enough people around to take care of the old people. Now, in an individualistic sort of existence, it's my obligation to prepare for my own uh, retirement, my own um, old age, my own dotage, when I'm potentially incapable of looking after myself. Um, I save up a pile of money. I uh, buy uh, uh, bonds or whatever, uh, some sort of way of making sure I'm not a burden to anybody when I'm old. The problem is, of course, no matter how much money I've got, I've got to have somebody around to pay this money to for me to continue to exist free or as pain-free as uh, extreme old age can be. If we have a radically shrinking population, um, then what we're going to end up doing is we'll lessen the suffering on the side of the non-existent, the potential, and we will increase the suffering on the side of the existent. Now, I understand this is kind of an extreme way of looking at it, but when we're talking about the voluntary extinction of the human race, I don't think that there's any harm in going to extremes here. Um, the upshot of antinatalism getting a little bit out of hand is an increase in the suffering uh, on the planet. I understand the logic behind decreasing our numbers, i.e. population pressures, uh, environmental issues, um, all that sort of thing. Yeah, that, that, that strikes me as logical, that we need fewer people on this planet, but we've got to manage it carefully. Um, so again, I can see on a macrocosmic scale the problem of this, or um, the complications in this, because the kind of reduction that we're talking about here over a very long period of time is probably going to happen just in the normal scheme of things. I don't think that we need antinatalism around. In the old days, people had kids simply because there was, um, A, kids just appeared because of the normal biological urges that people had, and uh, B, you needed somebody around, and people bred haphazardly, and you didn't know how many of your kids were going to survive, so you tended to just, they popped out when they popped out, and you didn't really think about it very much. Now we're planning our, um, our new arrivals, and uh, I can see a point that we will uh, arrive at in some point in the future assuming we haven't wrecked the planet in the meantime, where the human, uh, human growth ends up being negative all over the world. 
uh, just in the normal scheme of things. Why shouldn't the very same pressures that are, uh, uh, sorry, the very same downward pressures on the population of most Western countries eventually obtain everywhere on the planet? The, the people in, in places where the population is growing rapidly are no different ultimately than the rest of us. The, when, once they achieve material prosperity like we have in the West, um, they will, their birth rate will go the same way. This is already reflected in so many countries that have moved from have not to have countries in the last 50 years or so. They end up going exactly the same way. The same thing ends up happening. Negative population growth simply by um, the virtue of increased prosperity. Therefore, um, I'm not really saying that this debunks the idea of antinatalism, but what it does is it sort of says, okay, if I have obligations toward the non-existent, I have obligations toward the existent. How do I, um, how do I exercise my obligations to those who are actually ar alive on this planet? Because again, if I have obligations to the non-existent, the it's inevitable that I would have obligation to the existent because the existent. Their existence is more real than the non-existent. Seems a bit Kafkaesque that one should have to even point this out, but there you are. <laughs> Thank you.